Welcome to dealing with materials data. In this course, uh, we will learn about the collection analysis and interpretation of uh, data from material science and engineering. Uh, we are in module 3 and uh, we are looking at uh, probability distributions, uh, specifically we are uh, looking at uh, discrete probability distributions uh, so far. And uh, we have looked at uh, Bernoulli trials, uh, binomial and uh, negative binomial distributions. And we are going to continue with uh, more discrete distributions and uh, we are using a practical example where uh, these distributions are important. Uh, specifically, it is a characterization tool, it is a microscopic technique uh, to find out the volumes at uh, very small uh, length scales of uh, samples and uh, this is known as atom probe. And we are looking at uh, the process of detecting atoms in a atom probe technique and uh, how we can calculate the error bars basically, the uncertainties uh, that come about uh, knowing the process, uh, knowing what happens uh, in the atom probe uh, technique uh, in terms of selection and detection of atoms. Can we say something about uh, the actual composition of the sample uh, based on what we measure and say how much is the error. So, there is error in the process of both selection and detection and if we know them can we say how much is the error in the uh, actual sample in, in, in the composition that we give for the actual sample. So, that is the question that we are trying to answer. So, we will continue with uh, atom probe and we will see that uh, we looked at the selection process and we came to the conclusion that it is binomial, specifically it is negative binomial. So, we said that ok, so suppose if you have to detect 100 atoms how many failures will happen before you reach the target of 100. So, that is what the negative binomial distribution was. And we saw that for a detector efficiency of 0.6, obviously you will fail about anywhere between some um, 50 to 70 uh, times before you actually reach 100. So, that is what the negative binomial distribution showed. And we of course calculated the cumulative distribution function, quantile function and so on. And we also learned how to pick random variates from the uh, distribution. So, if you want to simulate this process uh, for example, then it is important to pick random variates when you are simulating this process for the first stage to use the uh, negative binomial distribution and calculate the values. So, we, now we are going to look at uh, uh, the hypergeometric distribution and we will find out why it is relevant for the atom probe technique. And uh, so, this is again just to remind you the schematics from Dano et al. So, we have a specimen and the specimen has a proportion of A atoms and uh, we take a volume V of this specimen and we pull out the atoms from that volume. So, that is uh, uh, M atoms from uh, volume V are pulled out, out of which J of them are of type A. And so, the proportion P of A atoms in this is uh, um, J by M. Now, these atoms are expected to fall on the detector and out of the atoms that fall on the detector, N of them get detected, out of which I of them are A atoms. And uh, we hence be able to calculate the proportion P0 of A atoms. So, this is the actual measurements. You will say ok detection happened for 100 atoms and 33 of them are of type A. So, 33 by 100 is the composition that you would measure at this point and it will have its own error. And what we are saying is how much uh, is the error in the actual sample composition that we give based on this value. So, that is what we are trying to answer. So, we looked at uh, this process of pulling out M atoms and we realized that uh, these atoms uh, when they fall on the detector either they get detected or they are not detected and based on this binary process given the detector efficiency uh, one has to think of negative binomial distributions to know how many failures will happen before you reach a success of a given number of atoms. So, that is the negative binomial and now we are going to see how hypergeometric is relevant. So, let us say that n is the number of detected atoms. So, the measured P0 is i by n and that is, but in the probed volume there are j by m. So, this is P and this is P0 that we measure. So, what can we say about P0 and P? 
uh, we can say that P naught is an unbiased estimate of P. Why? Because the detection is independent of whether it is an A atom or not an A atom. Irrespective of what is the type of atom, the detector always detects the atom, just that it does not detect all atoms that fall on it. It detects only a fraction of them, but that fraction is not biased towards detecting. For example, it is not like if 20 A atoms fall, it will detect 18 and 20 B atoms fall, it will detect only 10. If that happens, then this proportion that we measure uh, has no relevance to the probed volume or unless you know how much is the differences, you cannot say anything about the composition in the probed volume. However, in this case, because the detector is uh, independent of whether A or non-A that is falling on it, it is going to detect with a given efficiency, that efficiency remains the same. So, we can think of P0 as an unbiased estimate of P. So, our interest is to estimate the variance in P0, how much is the variance in P0. So, then we know how much is the variance going to be in the value that you are giving for composition for the specimen. So, it involves uh, two variances, we have already seen there is a negative binomial and there is a variance associated with it and because M is itself as an estimate, it is not just a single number. So, there is an estimate there and then we, there is an estimate uh, for P naught. So, that is what we are trying to find out, what is the variance in P naught. So, the problem is uh, you measured I out of N and these N have been arbitrarily selected from M, arbitrarily selected because the detector does not have any favorites, it detects both A and non-A with the same efficiency. Okay. Now, given M, so which contained J A atoms, what are the different ways in which I A atoms are chosen in a group of N, right? So, that is the question we are asking. So, we know that there were M atoms out of which N got detected. In that N, what are the different ways in which I of them happen to be A atoms? So, this is the question we are asking. I is a random variate of the real valued random variable I, let us say capital I. Then the I is a distribution and that distribution is uh, called hypergeometric distribution. And the hypergeometric distribution has the parameters j, m minus j, and n, right. So, what is this hypergeometric distribution? Basically, it answers this question. Given m, uh, which contained j, a atoms, what is the different, uh, what are the different ways in which i a atoms are chosen in a group of n? So, that is what hypergeometric uh, distribution is. It is called sampling without replacement from a finite population, okay. If you have an urn of J A atoms and M minus J B atoms, let us say, or M minus J non A atoms, and if you draw N atoms from this urn, then I of them are A that is given by the hypergeometric distribution, and the parameters are J, M minus J, and N. Okay. So, so, this is the hypergeometric distribution by definition. So, it is a sampling without replacement and it is a finite population. So, because it is a finite population, every time you pull out an atom, if it happens to be A or B, then depending on that, the uh, further probability of picking another A atom will change. So, it is a, it's a finite population. So, the probability function uh, or mass function for the random variable i, for it to have a realization of random variate small i is given by this expression. It looks um, very involved, but it is very simple. It is j factorial by i factorial minus j i factorial and uh, m minus j factorial by m n minus i factorial, m minus j minus n plus i factorial. And in the denominator, you have m factorial by n factorial m minus n factorial. Remember this is the number of uh, total number of atoms out of which n of them we are detecting. And uh, here we have uh, j of them in that uh, population to be a out of which i of them we are detecting. And m minus j of them are non-a out of which we are detecting n minus i of non-a. So, that is what this quantity is. And so, the expectation value for the hypergeometric distribution 
is given by NP, okay, uh, where P is remember it is J by M. The variance of I uh, is given by M minus N by M minus 1 N P times 1 minus P. Okay. So, if you calculate expectation of uh, I by N that is P and variance of I by N, so that will have an N squared dividing this quantity. So, that happens to be M minus N by M minus 1 P into 1 minus P by N. We are going to assume that P is P naught because we assume that uh, P naught is a unbiased estimate of P and if M is large and if it is a constant given by N by Q then one can show that expectation value of i by n is p naught and variance of i by n is approximately 1 minus q times p naught 1 minus p naught by n. Remember we are making several assumptions and approximations. We are first assuming that m is a constant which is not true, it is only an estimate, um, it, it cannot be um, a constant number. And we are assuming M is large which might be okay. So, you can do an experiment by pulling out large number of atoms. And we are assuming P is equal to P naught which is also a good uh, um, assumption or approximation, right. If so, then the variance is 1 minus Q P naught into 1 minus P naught by N. So, this is the hypergeometric distribution. So, let us take a look at uh, hypergeometric distribution a little bit, um, It how to deal with it in R. Uh, so, it is given by this command hyper. So, you have D hyper, P hyper, Q hyper and R hyper and uh, these are meant for probability density, cumulative distribution, quantile function and this is for generating random variates. And uh, hypergeometric distribution has uh, 3 parameters we saw. So, let us say that uh, we pulled out 170 atoms and uh, let us say that uh, um, the 85 of them are actually of type uh, uh, A and uh, we want to know um, if you detect 100 of them and then what is going to be the um, number of A atoms that you are going to have in this um, 100, right, I that is the uh, value that is of interest to us. So, that is what the hypergeometric distribution is going to give us. So, we will do as usual uh, using R. So, let us uh, open R and uh, the version is 3.6.1. So, we get the working directory. So, we are in the right directory. So, we can uh, deal with uh, So, this is uh, a repetition sort of of the earlier plot that we made for the uh, negative binomial distribution. So, n is equal to 100, m is equal to 170, j is equal to 85 that is given to us. So, we are again going to make a, a column of uh, a row of uh, plots, 3 rows are there and so 3 plots we are going to make and uh, for x uh, the sequence is 0 to 100 in steps of 1 for y it is 0 to 1 in steps of 0 0.01 uh, and so we are going to plot the probability density or probability mass function and cumulative distribution function and the quantile function. And remember d hyper you have to give uh, these uh, parameters, uh, okay. So you can see the distribution function, the cumulative distribution function, this is the probability mass function and the quantile function. So, all 3 of them are plotted and of course, if you want to get help in any of these cases. So, for example, if you want to uh, get uh, negative binomial, so you can say d n binom. So, it gives you and it tells you what are the things that you have to give to this function, a vector of uh, non-negative integer quantities you have to give that is why we give this uh, x and q is a vector of quantile. So, for calculating um, the quantile plot for example, we need to give the quantile. So, it has to be obviously between 0 and 1. So, that is why we have chosen and uh, p is the vector of uh, probabilities and so that is the um, in q and binom um, and uh, n is the number of observations. So, that is uh, um, something that we have uh, 
um, we have not uh, um, so so we, we will use the n when we want the random variate how many of them we need right so here we have to give the size probability and there is also a alternative characterization in terms of mean but we didn't use for dn by num similarly for hyper let us say p hyper. So, we have to give m n k right i x or q or p or things that you give here and uh, what are these m and k. Uh, so, here it is described in terms of uh, white and black balls in an urn um, you can think of them as a and b for example or a and non a for example. Uh, number of white balls in the urn and number of black balls in the urn that is why we give m and the j and m minus j okay. and k is the number of balls drawn from the urn. So, that is the n for us. Um, so, so, it is uh, you, you can think of this as the uh, white or a black or non a out of which how many of them we are pulling out that is the number of balls drawn from this uh, sample that is n and then this distribution gives how many of them are going to be uh, the atoms of type A right hypergeometric distribution is uh, used for sampling without replacement and these are the parameters and uh, so it, uh, it gives you the information about what this uh, function is giving right and so this is what uh, we found. So, when we do these plots tell you that uh, for example, if you pull 100 out of uh, a sample which had 85 uh, A and 85 non A then you are going to measure approximately about 50 and uh, there is a distribution. So, and, and this is a cumulative distribution function and this is a quantile. So, okay. So, we can also of course, get the random variates and uh, from this distribution. So, you can get random variates from the hypergeometric distribution. So, let us do that. Um, so, we are saying that okay, let us generate 20 random variates from uh, this uh, distribution which has these parameters. So, we are saying that uh, um, 85A, 170 total, so 85 non A and then let us say 100 of them from this sample we take out then um, what will be the um, uh, random variates that you would get in such a distribution. Okay. So, you get numbers like 52, 48, 52 so that is what we saw. So, it is about 50 it is distributed and uh, so it is closer to 52, 48, 52, 51, 50 and 45 and 46. 47 and so occasionally you have uh, some uh, 40 um, yeah so so the the lowest that you will get is probably about 46 here and you get to 54 so you can generate more random variates and see what happens so you can generate so let us say 40 then you will uh, see that uh, so it is distributed um, and occasionally you will see numbers going off like 56 in this case for example or 44 in this case for example. So, you will have the distribution about 50 and it will show you. Uh, so, this is expected because remember the composition that we are saying is 50 percent and so about 50 percent is what it is going to return and it is going to return values uh, um, about uh, 0.5. So, that is what we expect and that is what we see. So, we have now looked at the atom probe technique and there were two stages selection stage and detection stage and uh, we have looked at the statistics and at each stage one is negative binomial the other one is hypergeometric distribution. And uh, we have found out because once you know what distribution they are you know what their variances are going to be uh, they can be represented in terms of the parameters that represent this distribution. And knowing this variances of course, we have learnt how to do the error propagation in the previous uh, module. So, we can use this information we have now and try to do the error uh, propagation and uh, 
we did discuss during error propagation last time for example that uh, uh, how to deal with if it is independent, how to deal with it is not independent. And so we will continue with uh, a similar discussion for the atom probe technique uh, analyzing the errors or uh, random uh, variations that you see in your measurement and how does uh, it contribute to the error in your measurement of the composition of the sample. So that is what we will do. Uh, so we have given two examples of uh, two discrete uh, distributions so the negative binomial and uh, hypergeometric uh, they are all based on Bernoulli processes and uh, binomial uh, distribution. So we will continue in the, in the next session we will try to calculate the uh, variance in capital P in the sample the proportion of A atoms knowing what is the proportion of A atoms in your detected uh, number of atoms if you detected N atoms and you found the proportion to be P naught, uh, what can you say about the error in the composition that you will get for this sample? So that is the question that we will answer in the uh, following sessions, thank you.